Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to the master Sakya Chung Kung. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteenth Kamapa. And homage to Master Dubden Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of the practice tonight. Padma Kumara from of the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. Sumo. Tanjung Katsu to the city. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma tutors, directors of temples and centers, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good evening, everyone. How do you do? ニオンタカオ。シンザ。ガム。愛してる。愛してる。さらげ。さらげ。オラミコ。オラミコ。ケケロモチョ。ケケロモチョ。すごい。すごい。ジミ。ジミ。This evening, let's not talk about Padma Kumara. It's a good practice, and we all know about Padma Kumara. Today, we watch the animation prepared by T.B. Boye, the True Buddha Prashnya Treasury. And the title of the book is The Ghost in my house. My house, not your house. <laughs> not everybody's house. The ghosts at my house have decreased. Really? Because when I went back to Taiwan for almost three months, and when I came back, I discovered that the ghosts at my house all disappeared. Where did they go? And I discovered some in the refrigerator. My four ghost wives are still around, and the rest of the ghosts disappeared. And we've been back for about a month, a little over a month. And only gradually, a few ghosts appeared. The ghosts that used to hide in the bathroom disappeared. And the ghosts that hid in my closet dis uh, appeared again. Sumo's office, uh, 
at the bathroom across from Simu's office had a few ghosts, but much less than before. Less than before. But in the past, the ghosts in my house were like marketplace everywhere under the bed. Uh, under the sinks, in the closets, uh, in the exercise room, everywhere. So many of them then. So now much less. So what's the reason? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Why? Maybe because I haven't been back for so long and I left my Seattle house to go to Taiwan for about three months and maybe they felt that uh, the owner is gone, so they all left too. And now only a few. But after reading this book, you would know oh, it's very uh, crowded at my house. When you get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom, do you know? You know, the toilet's here, and in the wall behind it, there would be knocking sound. And then when I get up in the morning, passing by exercise room, you know, as you know, there are many mirrors in the exercise room. So I went in and looked at myself, and all the exercise equipment uh, moved by themselves. But nobody is around. Someone is on the exercise bike, some is uh, weightlifting, and there are many sounds behind me. But when I turn around, they all stopped and became quiet. And we also have a movie room, entertainment room, and it's very noisy inside. So I opened the door and asked, what are you doing here? And they replied, having a meeting. So even the ghosts can have meetings. I've seen a lot, and Simu saw even more. She saw even more. Uh, at that time, I stood there, and Simu said, next to you, there's a ghost standing. That was the first time she told me that there's a ghost standing next to me. At that time, good thing I have no hair, <laughs> but otherwise the hair would stand up. I have goosebumps all over. And then later on, I saw some myself, and after seeing ma so many and heard her talk so much about it, I don't feel anything anymore. One time, very pleased, I was very happy because Simu saw a ghost behind me. 
and she's wearing a bridal gown. Behind me, she told me, behind you, there's a woman wearing bridal gown, bridal gown. I was very happy then, because that uh, lady was the girlfriend when I was in high school. She told me then, she said, One day, if uh, she said it when she was alive, and we had a, 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 a commitment that uh, she would marry me and I would marry her. And she told me that I would uh, appear in front of you wearing bridal gown. So we made that vow. And after she died, passed away, she did wear the bridal gown standing behind me. So she's one of my ghost wives. There should be any no not violating the law. The first one called Fu Rong. Second one called Chen Chen. The third one is Rui Guang. And the fourth one Zhen Zhen. is Zhen Zhen. And we call her Tin Tin. So I have four ghost wives. When I wake up in the morning, I saw the toothpaste already on the toothbrush. So you don't need to do it yourself. So they help with this little things sometimes. They're like sisters. The eldest one, Fu Rong, second, Qian Qian, third, Rui Guang, and the fourth one is Jin Jin. Jin Jin. Ten Jin. Jin Jin. Jin Jin. Yes, Four of them. When we had many ghosts, they were uh, managing the older. They help a lot. Uh, they live in the refrigerator. And I asked, why do you live in the fridge? And they said they like the temperature in there. The temperature in there is suitable for them, more suitable. If you want to know the details, then you can read the book. And Simu found the second of the four ghost wives is the most beautiful. One time, she 
told me that she wanted to come with me to the Rainbow Villa to watch, uh, to see me performing Homa. And I said, okay, how can I bring you to leave the Southern Mountain Retreat? And she said, inside my pocket. Was it pocket? Oh, the bag. So she's hiding inside the, the bag. When we got to the rainbow temple, rainbow villa, and after she watched or saw the Homa, and she said she didn't want to be in the bag anymore. At night, she wanted to come out. And I said, where would you sit? And she said, at the back seat in the car. And I asked, why don't you be uh, stay inside the bag? Because there are red pockets in the bag, and the money is very smelly. We love money, love them, but she said the money smell really bad, didn't like it. At that time, it was still Master De Hui driving. And I sat next to Master De Hui, and Si Mu was behind, on the second row, and there's another seat at the back. On the way back home, Simu placed her bag next to her, and she wanted to pick her bag and look back and saw Chen Chen. When she saw Simu saw her, she hid behind the back seat so that Simu could not see her. And then Chen Chen's head. Got up again, and then Simu just turned back again to see it. But she didn't want to tell us and tell the Hui, because if the Hui had known, Master Hui had known, uh, he probably would drive like that. Because there's a ghost inside the car. And she said, Chen Chen is very beautiful. Of the four ghost wives, Chen Chen is the most beautiful. And Rui Guang, many of the people at the Seattle Lijang Temple knew her. Because before she left, she wore all white and she showed her eyes. By looking at the eyes, I knew that was her. When I backed out from the garage, she asked me a question. Grandmaster, uh, Grandmaster, are you willing to keep me? And I said, of course, I will. And she said, okay, then you will keep me. And then later on, it's south of Seattle in the like suburb area. She drove her own car and drove it into cement pipes until she was her body was totally crushed and died. So I've been keeping her, and she's my third one. 
These things from the past, but this four ghost wives are very good, very all good. The first one, Fu Rong, the second, Qian Qian, the third one, Rui Guang, and the fourth one is Jin Jin. This word is very difficult to pronounce. I know in Taiwanese it's Din Din, but in Mandarin it's Jin Jin, and sometimes I pronounce it as Zhen Zhen. Uh, this is talking about some of the little stories inside this book. And you would know when you read it if ghosts exist or not. Uh, let me share a joke first. An elephant and a camel met each other, and the elephant asked the camel, Why your breasts grow on your back? Why? And the camel replied, I don't want to answer. Why? Why not? Will you die talking about it? And the camel said, I don't want to talk about the person with that thing growing on the face talking about this. Uh, Chubby girl said, at the people's money, is safe in the saving account or in the card, in the bank card, but I'm different. I just keep them in the calorie. That's a chubby girl. Uh, alcoholic with his walking upside down into a, a grocery. Uh, a convenience shop, like, give me a bottle of wine. And then the storekeeper asked, why are you walking upside down? And he said, because my wife made me swear that I would never buy alcohol ever again. And if I do, I should walk upside down. Because I'm keeping my promise. There are many jokes about drinking or about getting drunk. drunk Someone got really drunk and got home. And he had the key in his hand, trying to open the door of his house, but he couldn't. He couldn't make it. He couldn't put it into the keyhole. So a policeman walked by and noticed that he couldn't open the door for a long time. And the policeman asked, can I help you? And the drunkard said, oh, 
glad you're here. Please help me. Can you hold the wall so that it doesn't move? So that I can put the key in my keyhole and open the door? That's a joke. Now we'll talk about question and answer. Question from England, Lianhua Mi Ming. Grandmaster, how are you? In the Long Agama Sutra, Diganikaya, the Seventh Sutra, Bayasi Sutra, Bayasi Sutra, actually, 23rd. There was a story which I read for a long time and still couldn't understand. Here's the passage. A Brahman said, There is no other world. There are no spontaneously born beings, and there are no retributions of good or evil deeds. How about you? What do you think? Kashyapa replied, let me ask you, according to what you said, do the sun and the moon belong to this world or to other worlds? Are they gods or humans? The Brahmin replied, they are in another world and not in this world, and they are gods and not humans. Kashyapa responded, by the same token, there must be another world and spontaneously born beings, and they are indeed are the results and effects of all good and evil deeds. Nehua Ming Ming asked, the Brahmin wanted Kashyapa to prove to him that cause and effect and transmigration indeed exist. So Kashyapa responded, Why? How do we know that cause and effect and transmigration exist? How do you explain the story? And his second question is, most people think that reincarnation is a rebirth in a future life, future world. Is it possible to be reincarnated into the past? Grandmaster, please advise. We know that reincarnation is like life after life, life one life after another, to the next, to the next. Very few people would be reincarnated to the past, like you return to the past. Is that the question? He asked, is there a reincarnation into the past life? And the first question, Actually, all this sutra text, not necessarily uh, in ancient, in classic wordings. And it's, it's uh, very tongue-tied to read it, so we can just put it in simple words, okay? The Brahmin asked Kashyapa, in our concept, there is no future lives and also no people being reincarnated, also no retributions. Like, like having blessings, you know, good retribution or bad retribution, you know, cause and effect. No, none of those. 
And he asked Kashyapa, what do you think? And Kashyapa replied, the sun, the moon, up there, do they belong to this life? Or to which life? Or the past life? And the heaven? So, the heaven and the humans belong to which life? Time. And Kashyapa responded. Oh, the Brahmin replied, the sun and the moon belong to other lifetime? And their gods, not humans. Uh, he couldn't understand this, and I, I don't understand it either. You know, reading this kind of cryptic characters, it's a very, uh, very terse, a very convoluted. <laughs> the Brahmin said, there's no past life. And we cannot, we won't be reincarnated. And no other worlds, and no reincarnation, no retribution. That's what the Brahmin said. And Kashyapa had no need to answer this way. How should he answer? Are you? In this lifetime? <laughs> How would you answer? Let me ask you now. If someone told you there's no such thing as future lives. When you die, you die. There's no retribution, no cause and effect. How would you answer? That's what my dad argued with me about. Until eventually, we went our separate ways with this pleasure. And he got mad, and he didn't want to celebrate New Year's with us and went to Kaohsiung. And I said, I also want to go to Kaohsiung to look for my uh, classmates. If someone asks you, there is no future lives and no karmic retributions. How would you answer? Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma tutors, and all fellow disciples. Anyone can answer? Ah, this is Manuhara. And I would blow my breath on it. Ah, that's a prize, someone. <laughs> that's not wrong, but that's not an answer. Give her a microphone. If you view everything as emptiness, then nothing. No today, no tomorrow, no yesterday. <laughs> so you're saying that nothing exists. Then you agree with the Brahman. Nothing exists, so there's no cause and effect then. 
师尊弟子简单的试着回答。呃，有的师傅 try to give a simple answer. Cause and effect can be observed. So what's Uh, the current life is the result of the past life, and the current life will result in a future life. Your answer is right, but this is something that Buddhists can say. And how about the ambassador? Thank you, Sir Jun. Sir Bao Sir Jun, the teacher also has seen the Ahan Jin. I like to make a report. I have read the Agama Sutra, and the Buddha and the Brahmin will discuss and have a dialogue, and then you ask and I answer, and that's how it is in the Agama Sutra with the heretics. And this one happens about. Past lives and grandmaster wants the disciples how to answer if this question were asked of you and the Buddha would ask. So what you said, nothing exists if there's no past lives and future lives. Then why everybody is different? Why you are like this and they are like that? If there is no past lives and future lives, then wouldn't everybody be the same? The Buddha would have said this. And then they would understand, and then they took refuge in the Buddha and became a monk or a young monk. Or a Supasaka or a Pasika. Or if it's a high Brahman, and they have a dignity and they don't want to shave their hair and join the Sangha, I would just stay home and become an Upasaka at home and practice. So about this question, then everybody would be the same, right? Why grandmasters, grandmasters, and we are like us, so there must be some differences. Now there are a few answers. According to the fundamental wisdom, It's not to be spoken to sentient beings, but also to the bodhisattvas and to the Buddhas, that there is karma, there is cause and effect. The fact that you have become a Buddha, of course you have the cause to become a Buddha. The fact that you become a bodhisattva, there must be a cause for you to become bodhisattva. Sakyamuni Buddha was a bodhisattva for 500 lifetimes. And because of the cause of this 500 lifetimes of bodhisattvahood, he has the result of becoming a Buddha. So because he had the cause of the past lives, he attained Buddhahood in the present lives. So the Buddha could not, could not uh, oppose or it's a cause and effect. So there's causal ground and resultant ground. The mandala, the Vajra, Mandala is the resultant ground, and the womb mandala belongs to the causal ground. That's spoken by the Buddha. Causal ground and resultant ground. So there's always cause and effect. We cannot say there's no cause and effect. You want to become a Buddha? Of course you need to have the causes for the to become a Buddha, in order for you to become a Buddha. 
in terms of the fundamental wisdom. Human world is just an illusion. It's just a mirage. Illusory. But in this illusion, there is also cause and effect. Look at the sun and the moon. It's sometimes full, sometimes new. And for human beings, they're man and woman. And look at the cells. You would. Uh, would have a few cells die and a few cells would be born. So they are born and they die. A human being is born and why is he born in that family? So many people were born into a wealthy family and many people were born into a poor family. And you say there's no six realms of samsara? In the Saha world alone, there are six realms of samsara. Inside the hospitals, uh, amputations, uh, opening up the skulls, that's just like hells. That's the realm of hells. And the realm of animal is whatever we eat. And the realm of the hungry ghost on earth, we still have famine. People who don't have anything to eat, that's the realm of hungry ghosts. And the realm of azuras, look at the sharks, cro crocodiles. Typically, they are Asuras. That's the ones in the ocean. The Asuras are in the ocean. So on Earth, there are six realms of samsara. And of course, on Earth, there, is, there are also heavens, like halfway up Mount Samaru. For humans. Did yesterday exist? Yes, that's your past. Now, today is your present. And tomorrow, do you know? You have a plan, but the plan can change. That's impermanence. That's cause and effect. Your yesterday is the cause of your today. And your today is would give a result tomorrow. So in terms of time, time is passing. Many things happen and ending. So when they're happening, that's the cause. And when it's done, that's the cough effect. When it's done, that's the cause. So what you do today will continue to tomorrow, and that's the, the effect. So in one day, or yesterday, the day before yesterday, or tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, there's cause and effect already that you can see. So how can you say no cause and effect? When you eat uh, contaminated food, then you would have stomachache tonight. What's the cause? Because you ate bad food. Why do you have diarrhea? That's the effect. It's very obvious cause and effect is there. So they should answer that what they answered were all nonsense. 
the questions or nonsense. And the answer given by Kashyapa was also nonsense. And what I said is, you uh, hmm, you excrete what you ate. That's cause and effect. <laughs> right? What you see with your eyes, then you will think that what you saw was the cause and what you thought was the effect. That would be my answer. Whom should I give this to? <laughs> to Grandmaster. You're talking about what's in the sutras, but I, I don't. <laughs> because the question is nonsensical and the answer too. So I'm just talking about a real life. So you excrete what you ate. Very simple. Why do you contract COVID-19? There's a reason, because you didn't wear a mask. Right? And you got into in contact with the, uh, the one with COVID-19, and the virus got into you, and you got it. And why didn't you get it? Because there's a reason too, because you had the strong immune system. So this is all cause and effect. Immediate effect. You don't wear a mask and your immune system is low. And then you get into contact with someone with COVID-19, then you got it. That's cause and effect. And the effect, you got it, you got COVID-19. So our face is the effect of the causes from the past. Why do you look so ugly? Because you didn't buy fresh flowers as offerings to the Buddhas. Now why do you? Why are you so beautiful? Because you make an offering of fresh flowers to the Buddhas in the past lives. That's taking into consideration a longer time. So past lives, present lives, future lives, or uh, closer by, which is yesterday, today, tomorrow, there is always cause and effect. Ah, that's a simple answer. But the Buddhist sutras are very lengthy. So this is my answer to the Huamimi from England. And his second question, most people think that reincarnation is a rebirth into a future world or future lives. Is it possible to be reincarnated into the past, into the past lives? Recently, there are movies about uh, back, <laughs> like traversing into the past. That's also cause and effect. And what happened to you in the past? Talking about cause and effect. Why so many female disciples write love letters to Grandmaster in this life? Recently, I have written two books about the uh, romantic affinity from many lifetimes. Two books about it. Because Grandmasters once was 
was emperors and they were all concubines in the inner palace. And recently many of them came and they all affinities from past lives. So I've written two books about them. So, the cause and effect is continual, but can we go back to the past? I mean, can we be reincarnated in to the past lives? This question by Lian Hua Ming from England. Some people can, some people cannot. So two answers. Because in your brain, you can take something from the past. You enter into your brain and you go back to your past, your past lives, and you would recognize who they are, who they were. So you can go back to the past lives. For such a long period of time, yes. Like water would flow accordingly. Like in America, it would be from north to south, from east to west. Most of them are like that. But is there water that flow the other way? So typically, water flows from north to south, but there are also some that flows from south to north in some special places. So therefore, it's possible to go back to the past lives. So Grandmaster can pick inside his own brain and see the, the lives in the past lives and like to see the, uh, the, the images or the, the clips of the past lives. I don't know about other people. Or sometimes in your dreams, you return to your past lifetimes. Will it happen in this life? Yes, like say you go back to your childhood. Like my parents have passed away, but I can return to the... In a certain realm, I can return. To the time and to the to the uh, events where when my parents and my sisters were living and still speaking the words that we were speaking back then, I can do it. How about Ambassador again? Thank you, Grandmaster. Grandmaster said that in our dreams we can dream of the past. And this is about reincarnation that can you be reincarnated into the past lifetimes? When Sakyamuni Buddha had this records that 
it's not related to spiritual cultivation. So after Parinirvana, where would the Buddha go? And the Buddha said that uh, you just cultivate spiritually the most the best you can and don't answer uh, this kind of questions. Don't need to answer these kind of questions. Don't need to think too much. Uh, there, there is uh, reincarnation for sure, there's karma for sure. Okay, thank you, thank you. So the ambassador already replied to you, Leha Mimi. Don't ask this kind of question. So why did you think so much and reincarnate too? And what, what's the point about being reincarnated to the past? That's uh, asking the same as not asking. It's meaningless, meaningless. So what's the meaning about reincarnated incarnation into the past lives? You can't change it anyway. So meaningless. So now do you remember the from England? <laughs> I answered the first question. And this are all meaningless questions. So the ambassador said it quite well. So Sakya Muni Buddha answered it really well. Where is the boundary, the borders of the world? What use is such a question? Meaningless. Uh, he did think too much. So today we will talk about Vimalakirti Sutra. The four immeasurable or boundless minds are the pure land of the Bodhisattvas. A Bodhisattva becomes a Buddha when sentient beings have attained loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity and reach this field. This is cause and effect. Because Sakyamuni Buddha said that the four boundless minds are the pure land of the Bodhisattvas. So, when the Bodhisattva becomes a Buddha, of course, the sentient beings who have attained loving kindness, compassion, joy, and quietness reach this field. What you practice, you would attain that. That's cause and effect. That's what it means. This is also cause and effect. So, what is the four? What are the four boundless minds? The or immeasurables, immeasurable loving kindness, immeasurable compassion, immeasurable joy, and immeasurable equanimity. Immeasurable loving kindness is to give happiness to sentient beings. This is to say it in plain words and compassion, you alleviate the suffering of sentient beings. That's compassion and joy. You do it with joy and mind, with no care, with mm, no expectation to get or to let go. And you do them that way <laughs> with joy and not for any conditions or any reasons. Only then it's called the immeasurable joy. And the next one is equanimity or equal impartiality. So you don't differentiate that you just want to help certain people and not the others. This is called immeasurable equanimity. Many people said, I like this person, I don't like that person. I want to help the person I like and not the person I dislike. Then that will not be equanimity or impartiality. Impartiality. 
So, you give others happiness, alleviate others' sufferings, do them with joy, without expecting anything in return. Such kind of for joy is called the immeasurable joy. And equanimity is equal, equal loving kindness, compassion, and joy. So if in my deliverance I should deliver that person but not that person, that's, that would be wrong. So it has to be equal. Equal deliverance, only equal deliverance is called equanimity. So Grandmaster Lu nowadays is different from the past. How? In the past, I really don't like certain people. I did not, I did not. When I just started, I saw many things done by the monks and nuns. So that's why I wrote many books to criticize ordained people. And one of them saw a monk from Singapore wrote a letter to me, Sung Yen Lu. Please remember, I want to skin you. You dare to write such books, I will skin you. That was wrong of me to write such books. So I admit my mistakes because I didn't have the immeasurable equanimity. But he was also wrong because he wanted to skin me. That's wrong. <laughs> he should have delivered me instead of skinning me, <laughs> peel my skin. But now I have another realm that sentient beings are all equal. No differences between man and woman, good and bad, or being beautiful and ugly. Only such a realm would be called immeasurable equanimity. So in the past, when I just started uh, my Buddhist studies, I've done many mis wrong things, but that was part of the process. Now the state of my mind is all sentient beings are equal. So in your deliverance of sentient beings, you need to deliver them equally. And this is the four immeasurables. You cannot have any discrimination or differences, because if you do, the only difference is in their spiritual capacities or spiritual roots, how to deliver them. The difference is in the how to deliver them, and that's called the wisdom of discernment. So as Buddhists, we need to remember the four immeasurables, loving kindness, compassion, joy, equanimity. You to be a bodhisattva, you need to uh, effort is for to help others completely and to let others happy and to resolve their sufferings. This is all the cause for Bodhisattva. For and you do it with joy, not for fame or benefits, or not for anything, and that's called immeasurable joy. And lastly, you uh, give love, compassion, and joy equally, and only then it's called equanimity, 
So now, Grandmaster's heart or mind is different from the past, different than the past. If any disciple who had left and came back, you cannot think that, oh, you left before and now you came back, so you must, there must be something wrong. No, you should not be like that. You should respect them even when they left. You should respect them when they came back. And they are your disciples forever, and you respect them nonetheless. So my mindset now, I respect all sentient beings. My criticism in the past were all wrong. All of them were wrong. When you are discriminating against certain people, that's also wrong. That's why I respect all sentient beings. Any one of them, whether they're good or bad, I respect them all. That's how I have become now. That's how I am. So sometimes talking about the ghost witch this created wreck havoc into the school because she worshipped the evil ghosts, the lower kinds of spirits. But still we need to respect her because she had such an affinity. She actually had delivered many sentient beings. But it's a pity. And because of her deliverance, we can recognize what is the right faith and what is not right faith. So she's teaching us too, right? Without ghost witch, how, how would we know about evil ghosts that's creating wreck havoc, creating problems? So she had her own use or she had her own credit. So by knowing ghost witch, you would know what kind of faith is uh, is at the low level and what kind of faith is at the higher level. So, so there's still benefit to it. So we still have to respect her. And because of ghost witch, we got to know the evil ghost so that we know to the right faith that we should believe in. So this is already teaching us about right faith, the correct or the right kind of faith. So that's the four immeasurables or four boundless minds. And let's talk about the four enticement practices. The first one is giving. Second one is uh, uh, kind words. And the third one is, uh, hmm, is uh, to benefit others. And the fourth one is to be in the same boat as others. So what are the four enticement practices is methods to deliver and salvage sentient beings. So Grandmaster went to the dance halls and have delivered many dance girls. And what is this? Uh, to be on their same level. If I didn't, had I, hadn't I gone to the dance halls, I wouldn't be able to deliver those dance calls. 
like the musician in the in the band in the dance halls that finally took refuge and became a monk that's because I went to the dance halls so she was a musician uh, he was a musician I think he played oboe and he saw that I always maintain a distance with the dance companion and not touching her body. I loved to dance when I was young. If you ask me about the dance hall, <laughs> the four dance clubs in Kaohsiung that I often frequented, and in Taichung, nowadays very few. Snow White. I think now there's only one left. The others uh, all closed down. But I used to go to all four of them. I love to dance in the past, but not anymore. Now, uh, I still remember a little. Like the dance music. I can recognize them. Blues. That's blues, and this is waltz. That's waltz. And how about rumba? That's rumba. And cha cha. That's cha cha. And tango. That's tango. Right? And jives. So you need to recognize the rhythm of the music and step on the rhythm. I belong to the dance halls. That's why I was able to deliver many dance girls. And the boss of the Snow White dance hall in the past, I don't know about now. And I helped to set the office desk. And Reverend Yi was a musician in the music band in the dance hall that eventually uh, became ordained and many other dance girls. So this is one of the four enticement practices uh, to be the same as the they are. You have to go to that place and to be like them, live together in order to deliver them. That's, um, and the beneficial work, like you do something that benefit them and then they are grateful to you and then you deliver them or giving then you give or you teach Buddha Dharma, you speak Buddha Dharma for them and then they take refuge. That's also called giving. And kind words is that uh, you are caring and 
so that they would uh, take refuge. Like if someone comes to the Lejang Temple, you have to make the best opportunity of that. You cannot say, oh, we are about to close, please. So, uh, we are closing, so please get out. No, no, no. Even if it's there's only one minute le left, you still want to invite them in and explain. Master Lu took the Dharma. Welcome. You, you can come in. Every Sunday in the Lupu Vida, have the fire offering, and the Master Lu take the Dharma. You have to be very clear. You have you have to explain clearly so people would love to come and you know when you're very kind and hospitable come let's have some tea have you ever served that you know, this is the best one it's a oolong tea and came from a certain place, and this is Te Guan Yin. Now that you came here, please have s some tea. So this is giving, uh, benefiting them, kind words, pleasing words to make them like it. Uh, who is this deity? Who cares? <笑><笑><笑> Uh, what deity is for, what that deity is for, you need to introduce them and explain very clearly that's Jambala and that's a wealth deity. If you practice it, you can gain uh, lots of wealth and would benefit you. You want to explain clearly, to welcome them, to serve tea. Are you hungry? Uh, we have cafeteria, welcome you to eat here. Uh, it, it's time, it's, we're, cl we're close. Or uh, you give such a bad look and s staring at them if they steal or not. There's uh, you shouldn't be like that in delivering sentient beings. So, um, anybody that comes to the temple, you should not let, it's like the fish come into the net, you should never let them go without any result. You know, you can lit incense and let them pray and explain the temple or the rainbow temple and more. And whatever activities we have. So what kind of programs we have, you need to explain all those. What they, if they like it, then they would stay. So the four enticement practices, there are four of them. Like you want to be generous, like if they have problems, ask them to do a, to draw a, a fortune, and then you can explain it to them, and then tell them that they can come for spiritual consultation, and everything is voluntary. Yeah, you shouldn't be like, when they come, and it's like, oh, you need this offering, certain offering. No, don't do that. So just let them do it voluntarily.
，这应该的。所以四摄法，一个是布施，因为你布施他，他就。So one is giving because you give, so they believe in the Buddha. Second is the pleasing words, and because you're kind and welcome them, serving tea, asking them to meal. So when they think of that, they would come and they pray to the Buddha. And then you benefit the people. When they come, you give them benefits. Then they would come. And the last one is to be on the same level. What they do if they're masseur, then you go there for massage, and then you speak dharma for them. Or if they have, they open a restaurant. Then you can go there, and then、uh, talk about dharma for them. So the four enticement practice is the pure land of the bodhisattvas. So when the bodhisattva becomes a Buddha, the sentient beings that they delivered would come to this field. So. When you deliver all the bodhisattvas, the bodhisattvas will go there. Like Mahatwin Lord responds, that all two Buddha school disciples would come to the Mahatwin Lord response. That's all for today.